which is Tom and Mary, who are actually a couple, in case you didn't know. So thank you for joining us, and thank you guys for joining us. Gosh, we're so happy to be here. <laughs> okay, so we're on Saturday of Resistance Festival, and last night Tom and Assemblage 23 played an incredible set. There's never been a time in Resistance where I haven't been able to move in the crowd, and last night that was the case. Even before the band had gone on, you couldn't get in the door, so shows how much love there is for this band. <laughs> so, for those people living under a rock, uh, tell us about how you would describe Assemblage 23, and then tell us how you would describe Helix. Uh, you know, Assemblage 23 was kind of born out of, uh, you know, having a love for kind of EBM and synth pop, but being frustrated by uh, lack of meaningful lyrics and um, uh, sort of uh, an element of melody. Um, and it's one of those things where if you're not hearing the music that you want to hear, why not make it yourself? So. Uh, you know, I, I started to incorporate those elements, and that's just sort of become what um, A23 has been uh, kind of become known for is you know the the combination of danceability with melody and and emotional or um, uh, lyrics. Okay. And Helix. Oh, and Helix. <laughs> uh, Helix came from Tom and I worked together like years ago. My gosh, we've known each other for almost ten years. Um, well, more than that. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can lose check track. Um, yeah, so Helix was just, Tom and I had worked together. Uh, like, I, I hit him up, like, geez, like eight or nine years ago to do some mixing work for an old band that I had. And, um, you know, I was like, I thought to myself, if I can, if I send this mixing work to Tom, he'll have to hear my voice and then maybe I'll be able to work with him on something because I was a big fan. And um, yeah, and he did. You know, he list. He had to listen to it over and over because as you, when you mix something, you do. You know, you have to hear. Um, and, uh, and then I sent him a message, and I, he liked it a lot. So he told my partner, who I was working with at the time, um, how much he had liked my voice and everything. So it kind of worked. And um, just over the years, like we, uh, he had a project come up with Scott from my Sphere. Um, and it's off the Methuselah Tree album. It's called Society of Dogs. And he was working on a track, and he just wasn't apparently happy with the vocals uh, fully, so he said, uh, he wrote me a message and he said, uh, do you want to put some vocals on this? And I said, okay. Uh, and so we worked really well together and just, it took a while for Helix to come, but there were other things that Tom and I worked on together too that he kind of brought me in for, it was her surveillance track. Um, I'm on one of those tracks and then eventually we were just like why don't we just do like a whole project so we started to do Helix and if I had to describe Helix um, it's a bit out of step with a lot of the acts here um, but not but so I would call it like basically like someone said described it as romance pop or like romance synth pop and I kind of think it is um, but it's really fun and um, I don't know I would say like trip hoppy um, like synth pop, uh, any other thing? Yeah, it's just kind of a mixing <laughs> bowl of ev all the kinds of music that we like, you know. And one, you know, one of the things that we wanted we wanted to have. Uh, obviously, you want to have a consistency in sound with the band, but the other side of that was we wanted to kind of be able to do whatever we wanted to do. So if we wanted to do something yeah. like on the last EP, there's a song that you know it could almost be off a Blur album. There's like guitars <laughs> and live drums very out of step with the rest of the stuff that we've done, but we didn't want to impose limitations on ourselves uh, creatively. So we try to maintain a thread so that it's recognizable as us. Obviously her voice is um, the, you know, the main part of that, uh, but we wanted to give ourselves the flexibility to uh, explore different genres and, and different styles as, as we wanted to. Yeah. I mean Resistance has been known always for having a few um, sort of more emotional, sort of more romantic, melodic bands. Yeah. So it is nice to have that break up <laughs> from constant dancing because my knees need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. And like we just, we love performing together. It's such a really nice thing to share with someone, uh, with, you know, your husband. So it's really, really nice. And, um, you know, it's, it's just, it, and just to travel and all that and to come here. And it's just such an honor to be here. Yeah. Okay, so Resistance is obviously the UK's biggest, most loved festival. Sorry, Ted, we love you too. But um, what has been your favourite things about Resistance, and what do you think makes this different to other festivals? Uh, I think the atmosphere is really what um, 
what makes resistance special uh, you know I mean obviously the the venue having this, this courtyard where people can grab something neat like everything you need is right there um, and you know for us as, as performers um, one of the things that I, I've always appreciated about this festival is just the professionalism of the crew and the organizers uh, you know it's even if you've been doing it a long time like doing a live show has a degree of stress yeah. to it yeah. so knowing that you're in good hands and that there are people who are going to take care of things that you don't have to worry about is uh it makes a huge difference as a performer and every time that uh we've, we've played this festival uh the crew has just been top notch and, and really made it a, a wonderful experience it's super impressive like i was i was just on the wings last night because tom was performing and i wasn't but it was just incredible to first of all see how many people came out to the festival obviously it has such a good reputation people are just like banging down the doors to get in it was so crowded and you couldn't move when tom was on. it was so, it was crazy but also just the way that the staff ran the whole thing and it was so tight and just the sound was amazing so i i and when you're a musician and you go up and you sound check you that is like the gift that is like the thing that you're like, okay, I feel confident that we're going to get through this successfully because if they don't want you to sound good, you're not going to. <laughs> okay, and I mean, the two of you combined have so many years of music experience then. What's been your, or some of your happiest moments or the most happiest moment whilst sort of doing this? Oh, gosh. Uh, it's hard to say. I, you know, I... Um, you know, one of the highlights for me is, uh, you know, I'd been living out in um, Seattle for a long time, and then I moved to, to Boston uh, to, to be closer to Mary. And uh, about a week after I moved out, we played our first Helix show there as uh, at a festival. And it was such a, it was very emotional uh, because, it, you know, everything had been done at a distance. We'd been doing stuff over the internet, you know, to collaborate. So it was a very emotional, um, a very emotional show. It was a very special one uh, for me, for sure. Yeah, we always do a hug at the end of our set. So if you see us tonight, we will always. <laughs> Tom leaves the keyboard, I leave the mic, and we just do a big hug together because we got through it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a really nice feeling, yeah, to have that. I mean, most bands, of course, would say something external, but the fact that you have that together on the stage probably yeah. plays through to the audience as well. well yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you when you are on stage performing with other musicians. You know, it's very much like a familial relationship. Um, you know, it's different than just you know, your friends. Like, there's a deeper connection there. And, uh, you know, when you're also romantically involved with the person that you're on there, that's something most couples don't get to share, is that experience together of, of performing and creating something beautiful um, together that an audience can appreciate is, is really, really special. Yeah, okay. And just as a side note, why is it all the industrial bands are coming from Boston recently? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have massive talent on the East Coast. It seems to be I a yes, I am <laughs> so like like it's so great. I like you know Brian from Morris Black, and we have so many. We have we have so many Brians actually. We have Gothicals over there. Uh, we big have, time kill. Big time kill, which is great. Uh, we have uh, we have Interface in New York. Um, what else do we got? We got a lot. Like I'm like I don't even know you if get, I can list them all. The Northeast we is got, very dense. You know, you you have New York City, you have uh, yeah. New Jersey, Philadelphia, um, Boston, all those, and you know, within a couple hours yeah. of each other. So yeah. there's a, a, a huge concentration of musical. Oh my god! Yeah, we have Christian Carver, who's like a drummer who drums for like everyone, and he's has his own project Carver, which is amazing, and we just. Yeah, we're so lucky. Like, it's so cool. I'm always like, East Coast represent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, so we've covered your happiest moment there, but have you ever had a particularly touching fan moment? He has. <laughs> he gets them all the time, and I'm always like, hmm, wow. I, I always say to Tom, I say, I wonder if the people who come up to you know that other people come up to you and say the same thing, or if it's just... Anyways, I'll let you ex he'll, him explain. <laughs> it's, I, I mean, it, it, it's, it is really, as, as a performer, it's, it never gets old to hear from somebody that your music played a really meaningful part in their life. And it's 
it's hard for me to accept that, even though I'm a music fan, so I've experienced that phenomenon too with other bands that, that, mean, that have meant a lot to me. Um, and it's hard to accept as like, what, I made something that impacted somebody's life is, is really a, a huge thing. But yeah. one of my first instances I ever had, and this, this was probably about, I don't know, 20 plus years ago, we were on tour and we were playing in New Mexico and um, this was shortly after Failure came out. In the front row, there was this dude who had corpse paint on and like the spiked gauntlets, and he was huge. This guy was like a very imposing guy, and he's just kind of sitting up front. I was like, is this guy gonna cause me trouble? Like, he doesn't <laughs> look like he's gonna like a synth pop band. Yeah. And he was just kind of sitting there very stoically throughout the set, and we played Disappoint, and he started bawling. Oh, um, and, I, and I started like getting choked up too because it was you know just seeing the um, the impact that this big badass dude you know it was it was very unexpected but um, you know since then there's been a lot of times where I've gotten to talk to people one on one and, and heard these incredible stories both of, of tragedy and of, of happiness and uh, it's an honor to be tangentially involved in that you know just. To, to have something that you created be a part of somebody else's life is incredibly special. Yeah, I've, I've received like myself, like just those messages from people saying, you know, hi, I'm a female, like I'm, I'm like, cause now like I do my own, like I have a side project that's just my, meet Mary Catman. So it's just, but it's all me, like I do everything. So mm -hmm. like I have people reach out to me that are like, wow, like you're producing, you're writing your own stuff, you're imposing your own stuff. Like that's such an inspiration to me as another female, like feeling, you know, I, I'm all about like women in the scene and yeah, coming up enough. and no. now, and I'm all about like, if you think you don't be afraid to try and learn a DAW, don't be afraid to try and, you know, just get the, the feel for a MIDI keyboard and, and, and try to lay down some parts and just see if it works. Cause it's just, it's something I was really afraid to do for a long time. And like hearing women like reach out and say, wow, like, you know, you've done so much, like you're a mom, like you're doing all of this. Like that's such an inspiration. And that is like crazy. I'm like, I'm so happy. Cause I just want people to just do, you know, especially women just to take advantage of like, if you've got a talent, don't be afraid to like, you know, yeah, do it. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, now you've mentioned that about your little story there, with some people coming up to you. Just reminded me that there was a couple of times where my partner, when we were new, um, very much getting her into the music. Yeah. So there was one evening where I came back and she was like, check out this really amazing song I found. It was Shuffle and Swallow by um, Comedy Christ. And I was like, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> and then another day I come home and as I'm coming home, I can see her dancing like mad in the kitchen. And as I come in, she's got your Let You Be Your Armour playing really loud. And I was like, how do you know this song? And she was like, you listened to it the other day and I secretly shazammed it. And I was like, oh my God, I love you. So, <laughs> so it's nice little things like that. But yeah, yeah. you make your Music has amazing. an amazing power to bring people together. And you know, <laughs> even people from very diverse backgrounds, uh, you know, it's, you just sometimes need that one point of commonality to, to connect. And you know, festivals are a great example of that. You, you have a very diverse crowd, but they're all there with that singular purpose to, to dance and sing along and just get lost in the music. Okay, and changing the subject from music now to something a bit more silly. So where the last few years have been absolutely batshit insane, and you know, anything can happen tomorrow, we'd be like, <laughs> what, what are your predictions of stuff that might happen by the end of this year? Oh, shit. Like <laughs> musically or just politically <coughs> or space oh, aliens? I, I asked someone the other day and they said the whales were going to take over. So, oh, right. I, I I feel like I, I feel like we have transcended um, uh, parody yeah. or or absurdity <laughs> because there's nothing now to me that is too absurd yeah. that if you said up uh, you know I you know I think Ronald McDonald is going to be elected president and. Uh, okay, yeah, why not? Probably. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. no weirder than anything that's happened in the past, you know, four or five years. So mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't even dare to, to ask because I, I couldn't, who could have predicted all the crazy shit that has happened mm -hmm. uh, recently? <laughs> yeah. I, no. Yeah. yeah, and plus, if it comes true, I don't want people <laughs> writing me angry emails. <laughs> Especially in the States, this is so much. I almost like, I cringe almost to think. Okay, people all over the world are watching what's happening. <laughs> but if you were, say, 
president or Madam President for the day or a week or long enough to make some change essentially, what is the first thing you both do? Oh god. Um, I would tax the fuck out of the millionaires and billionaires. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> same. <laughs> the, the free ride for, for the ultra wealthy would end. Yeah. yeah. It would like focus more on social programs uh, to be serious. Like really, I mean, it's it's sad uh, how much we're run by corporations, and that we neglect the welfare of the people who uh, you know are around us. Yeah, the pyramid's gonna topple soon, isn't it? Like <laughs> it's it's I, it's hope so. <laughs> it, it, I mean, if his history is any indication that it's inevitable, uh, you know, when if we're all alive to see it happen or not, who knows? But um, nothing lasts forever, and. It certainly seems like things have become more tumultuous and, and chaotic. We just need to take care of the people that surround us, you know. If we want the world to be a better place, we need to take care of the people that are that need to be taken care of and not just leave them. Like homeless people and people come out of prison, they can't get jobs. I mean it's that stuff is just terrible stuff that goes on in the United States. People are worried about trans people. They're worried about all this other stuff, and it's like, no, we need to focus on yeah, fixing. Like, <laughs> you know, you ever met a trans person, actually yeah. Lovely. Yeah, right. yeah, I know exactly, and it's just, it, yeah, it just comes from just a lot of people. I think that just never had the experience of themselves of meeting. Yeah, scary, scary unknown. Yeah, people, isn't yeah. And <laughs> um, going back to music, then. So, has there ever been a moment where you almost gave up on producing music? I mean, there's been a lot of times where there have been frustrations or, you know, something happens where you're just like, ah, fuck this, you know? <laughs> yeah. But ultimately, you know, I mean, I've been doing music since I was a teenager, so it's kind of at my core. So it's like, you know, I, I couldn't remove it from my life any more than I could remove my liver, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, a, it's a part of who, who I am. So even if I wasn't you know, doing it to the level where I, I'm performing and I have a fan base, this is something that I would still be tinkering around with in my basement because, you know, it brings me happiness and it, it's, you know, throughout your life you go through so many changes, so many, um, you know, ups and downs and things that you can never predict. Uh, and, and for me, music is a constant throughout that. So I know that even if, I can't count on having a, a job all the time, or I can't. You know, we can't count on having relationships, uh, you know, last forever. The music is always there, yeah. and that will always carry you through those difficult um, times. So, yeah, I've got. I've certainly been frustrated. I've certainly had some, you know, like a terrible show or something where you feel pretty rotten afterwards. Yeah. But <laughs> I, you know, I couldn't. I can't imagine my life without music. It's 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 inconceivable yeah yeah same it's part of your identity when you're a musician it's like you just eat sleep and i mean you like get haunted by songs you go and like you know we try to lay in bed at night i try not to work on music too late at night because i'll just hear it loop and loop and sometimes i'll be in the shower and i'll hear a synth part and i'll go downstairs and i'll be like okay oh, get that out i'm gonna forget that you know what i mean so it's one of those things that just kind of haunts you all the time like and there's there are times where you do feel like i don't want to do this anymore or i don't think i can or i'm not capable but I think it's just, it's a, it becomes a part of who you are and how you express yourself and the expression of how you've evolved as a person. And it's really like a landmark. There are landmarks when you're a musician that are, you know, that show your development as a human being. I think it's important to, you know, make that a priority, even if you feel discouraged, like to, just to keep, maybe keep a little bit, even if you want to take a little bit of break, but just go back because it's such a precious thing for yourself to have. It's. And it, in some sense, too, it, it acts as a, a diary mm -hmm. of your life. You know, if you've yeah. been doing music for a really long time, you can revisit a song and you can remember what inspired it and what you were going through, what was going yeah. on in your life at the time. Nobody else is going to really be privy <laughs> to that, but it's, um, you know, it, as a creator, you can look back on that and, and it, it acts as a time capsule, in, in a mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. That's really nice, never thought of it that way. <laughs> okay. And do you think there are any bands out there, obviously Assemblage 23 is massive, do you think there's any bands out there that deserve more exposure, a bit more love? 
Oh my god, there's so many. I'm, I'm, can I just say one? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. I, I know so many musicians that like share their frustrations with me about because I feel like promotions are so important now, more so than sometimes talent. Not trying to say anything, but I do feel like the promotional aspect sometimes overrides the abilities, and I feel like that's a really tough play, especially in the internet where you know you're in the internet and you're like, oh, there's so many bands, and it's hard. To, there's so many people to compete with. I just feel like you know some people get lost like in that. And one I will say is a big big ups for Coma Duster, uh, Real Cardinal. I think he's an amazing musician, one of the best I know. And I feel like he's always just sort of trying to get himself seen, but he's so amazing. So the name of the band's Coma Duster. Oh. Yeah, he was on Fixed for a while. Um, I don't know if you know that record label, but um, it's run by the it's Cell Dweller. Um, it's his record label. Uh, just an amazing musician, and again, see, <laughs> you don't know it's uh, I, I'm gonna uh, cop out, and I'm, I'm gonna see Mary's solo stuff. I think deserves oh, a much bigger you. audience, um, and I think she's getting there. I think with each of the, the EPs that she's put out, um, she's she's grown. But uh, you know, I'm in a really privileged position <laughs> because I've gotten to witness her starting from nothing. I, I mean, she used to provide vocals for music created by somebody else. And then when the pandemic started, she really took advantage of like, well, can't go out, can't do anything. It's like, I'm going to, I'm gonna learn how to use this um, digital audio stuff. I'm gonna learn how to write my own music and I'm gonna create songs. And the speed with which she's gained proficiency and gotten good mm -hmm. and like developed good songs is, <laughs> is way faster than it ever was for me. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I, I hope that more people will discover her music and, and um, you know, gain an appreciation for the, the talent she's got. Thank you. And just to be clear for those watching, what was the name of it again? Sorry. It's Mary Catman. Mary this, Catman. Yeah, Mary Catman, yeah. Okay, fantastic. So um, with the scene being the way it is, what do you th both think are some of the best things about the scene? And what are some things you'd rather see improve? Oh, I don't know. I think I, this is what I think. Sh okay, <laughs> what is my feelings about it? Uh, I, I think that the scene is awesome. I never meet a, a, a nasty person. I, everyone's so kind, so it's great. I just and I love the thing I love about the scene is how it's sort of evolving to be a little bit more inclusive of other sounds. I feel like sometimes, even though like we are considered an alternative scene there's a certain like box that a lot of people tend to fall into over time of that same kind of sound that i feel like it's nice to kind of see some like different kinds of sounds coming in because i feel like it does get almost exclusive within itself like exclusive within the alternative which is weird to say but just being open to hearing like that's a drum pattern i never heard it's not just like you know kick snare kick snare like there's something different about that and i'm going to be open to that <laughs> sometimes i feel like it's like it can become a little monotonous i would say kind of springing off that but not from music but from kind of demographically um i think the scene could stand a lot more diversity um there's not a lot of female artists getting headline uh, or, or you know festival slots. There's not a lot of people of color. Um, I would like to see more of that uh, yeah. in the scene. It, it, it's not that uh, you know the people in the scene are are bigots or anything like that, but for whatever reason, it, it is primarily a, a, a white person uh, demographic uh, is the majority of it, and I. I'd like to see more inclusivity in that um, sense uh, because I think it, it can only benefit both just from the sense of community, but also from the music itself. Uh, you know, bringing in influences that um, you know weren't there before, or and voices yeah. that haven't yeah. been heard before. Because uh, you know, again, like we we like to think that our music is is different and is progressive, but like Mary said it's progressive within a very narrow range of allowable things. Mm -hmm. So to get more perspectives and more voices and more different sounds to influence and help evolve the music, I think would be tremendously uh, beneficial. Yeah, and um, I was saying this to Pretty Addicted last night, so where resistance and interest as well have become sort of the gold standard in the UK for how we do things right, and if not the wider world, 
they've been trying to put on more females, more queer people, more minorities, yeah. more groups. So what would be something you'd want to say to every promoter out there to try and help? It, it's difficult because the people who put on these, um, you know, especially festivals where there's just so much work goes into them, obviously they want this to be, um, they want it to be a, a profitable um, situation. So there is a tendency to, I mean, you know, if you want to see the worst uh, offenders of this, look at the big German festivals. There's, for the past probably 20 years, there's been maybe three bands <laughs> rotating as headliners for these things. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you who they are. You could probably yeah. name them yeah. off the top of your head. I mean, our metal festivals in the UK like that too. It's always yeah. 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 So, I, I feel, uh, you know... And we're getting older. They're getting older. And I mean, who's going to take the spots of the Legacy that's, X when that's they're not around? That's the other thing. Around? Yeah, all, all, yeah. Of, all of the bands that are these headliner bands are all in their, like, 50s or 60s <laughs> even now. And I'm not seeing... Um, newer talent being given the support or the, the opportunity to go and be the next ones to, to ascend to that throne. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know, I'm not a business person, so I, I, I don't know the, the realities um, that go behind it, but I, I'd like to see a situation where, yes, you, you give them the red meat, the, the bands that are popular, that have the club hits, that people are going to come and people want to see and mix that with some newcomers, like people, some bands season. that people haven't heard, you know? Some seasoning. <laughs> yeah, a little absolutely. bit, yeah. Because it's, and I don't think it's so know. difficult now. It, it, it's very strange because we have the internet, we've got things like Spotify, where you have literally all the music at your fingertips. But that's <laughs> also the problem because it's so hard to find that needle in a haystack. So, in, in, in some sense, the, the festivals, I think, have a degree of responsibility um, to sort through that and, and say, hey, check this out. Like, yeah, I know, you like And One, you like V&V, &V, but check these guys out. They're yeah. really, really great, and, and they deserve a shot. Yeah. And, um, and help lift up those newer bands. Um, because it's so hard now to get established. Like I really lucked out that I was getting established at the time I was. I don't know how new bands fight that signal to noise ratio that's out there now because sure, you can get somebody's attention for uh, you know a minute or two, uh, but then there's a hundred other bands yeah. in the wings yeah. uh, competing for that same thing. So I, I would love to see just more support for things that go outside of our comfort zone and and just the known. I'd like to see more uh, unknown uh, kind of presented. Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, pe and I don't think people realize like how special it is when you see like I get like I said, females reach out to me and they say I I can't believe you're doing all this and you're a female and I feel empowered by what I'm seeing you do and you're an inspiration. Like I'm I'm inspired by this. This is something, and I feel like that is I you know for for any. For anybody of any like minority of any sort, I feel like those things really matter. Like, you know, to see someone that's just like you, like able to go up there and, and have a chance, you know, because I feel like sometimes as a female specifically, I don't know how it is for other things, but uh, you know, you do feel sometimes you're like, why should I even bother? Like, I'm never gonna have a chance, you know, and it gets you down. Like, you feel really just, bad. Just about feeling it. seen. Sure, I think, feeling seen and acknowledged sure. makes a huge difference. And that could play into what I was talking about before of like wanting to see more diversity in the yeah. scene is if you lift these people up and people are like, oh wow, this is really cool. Yeah. I never heard something like this before. Then you, you create a, an environment that is more fostering for that kind of. Yeah, and I have to say a, a big shout out for bands recently such as Monexis and um, well, there's a surprise this weekend, you would have seen it, but. Um, Marie, grab your face, um, did an incredible job at Infest and I have probably bored my audience sick of talking about them, <laughs> but where these large bands have just grabbed this really small artist and included her in all of their work, she's now in the UK, a yeah. really famous name in yeah. the space of a year, so quite right, if other bands did that too then we'd have so many more women right. and minority groups in, so. Yeah. yeah. Right, last two things then, is... What do you have in the works? What's what's going on with both your bands at the moment? Uh, We're probably 
80% of the way done with the new Helix EP. Uh, there's just been a lot going on, uh, you know, the, the festival and like planning our live dates for the rest of the year. Um, so it's it, it hasn't been going as quickly as we had hoped, but uh, so we hope to have that out pretty soon. Uh, we're going to be playing some more uh, shows in the U.S. Um, Mary has a new EP yeah. coming it's out. It's called Swallow, and it's coming out, jeez, uh, <laughs> whatever, okay. whenever the last remix comes in. And that could be for now or not, I don't know. <laughs> I'm excited for that. Yeah, yeah, that's coming out soon, and I'm really excited. It's sort of like a bit of a play on like a mid-tempo bass style um, with vocals, obviously. Um, I think it's really unique, and I'm, I'm looking forward to getting the reception for that. And I'm starting uh, the, the new A23 stuff. Um, you know, I during the, uh, following the pandemic, I went back to working a day job again. So it's, um, I'm also in the process of finding that balance of, um, you know, working and coming home and being exhausted and finding <laughs> the, the, the time and the ability to uh, pour into creative things. And I'm sure that will be an ongoing learning experience, but um, so it's it, it's in the works. I, I couldn't tell you when it's going to come out, but um, <laughs> it's being worked on. <laughs> okay, perfect. And very lastly, do you have anything you'd like to say to your fans? Oh my God. Well, thank you so much for all the support like that you've ever given. Like literally, like every little comment, every little share, every little everything means so much. Like the reason that we do music is for you. Like we do it for that exchange, that back and forth, that it's like a humanitarian thing in a way, because there's not really much to be made from it, but it's just that idea that like, I, you're seeing me, like you're seeing what we're we're putting out and you're responding to that, that, that means so much. And a, a huge thanks to Resistance for taking the chance. Oh, and yeah. this is our first show outside of the United States. Yeah. And really? Uh, yeah, yes. we, we obviously <laughs> really want to make some inroads in, into Europe. Yeah. And, um, they, they've opened that door for us, so yeah. uh, we're extremely appreciative of that. Extremely appreciative. Like it, I, I reached out to Layton, I was like, hey, you think? And he was just like, oh yeah, sure. And I'm like, what, wait, sure? Oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah, he's, too, he's too humble that man. He's <laughs> lovely. An absolute legend. Uh, man, just and case. so calm <laughs> this whole time. It's been such chaos. Not really chaos, but it's a lot of people here. So it's he's been wonderful and just so ridiculously calm. I would be like, ah. So, yes, massive thank you to Leo. <laughs> thank you. All right, but thank you both ever so much. Thank you, thank you for having us. And thank you again for watching.